<laughs> hey, hey, adventure girls. Welcome to the Why She Adventures conversation series. I have the lovely Sarah here with me today. Hey, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having uh, me. <laughs> oh, you are totally welcome. I'm so excited. We've already been having a really great chat before we got onto this. So I know <laughs> we're just going to carry on with the same thing. So um, she's coming to you live from our lockdown um, as we are here in New Zealand. Uh, but ironically, she's just over the hill. Hi, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So, um, so Sarah's in her late 30s, um, she's a mum of two kids, and she's the Managing Director of Outdoor Education New Zealand and Adventure by Nature, and she runs that alongside her husband, Alan, um, and she loves challenging herself to get out and do new, uh, do new adventures, um, and it's where she feels most at home is in the mountains. So when I met Sarah, it was um, on two occasions. Um, the first, I'd actually booked in to go and do a course with them, um, which I was <laughs> pumped about. Um, so I wanted to go and learn to be more confident in the snow. Um, and then when I saw that they had, um, it was run by a woman, I was like, yes, this is amazing. Um, and then unfortunately, we got all the way pretty much to the, to the like, where do we, we got to, what's, I can't even remember the town. Yeah. 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 And then we had a rock slide and we couldn't get through. We were devo, absolutely devo. So uh, yeah. that was the first time I ever met Sarah, which was, and she was amazing. Um, and then more recently, I just reconnected with her uh, through a friend, Jules, um, where we were collectively supporting a, a, um, a, a project uh, for her, for Jules at Further Faster called Her Mountain Calls, where Sarah was involved in, um, uh, donating, gifting, an ex amazing experience for some very deserving women. So, yeah, yeah. yeah that was, that was pretty cool. cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> was it very Vincent? Oh, uh, yeah. I, let's, I think we, I would love to like actually just launch straight into that because I think that's so nice. So, so it's a total honor to have you here and to be able to talk adventure stuff. Uh, we were just saying it's like given that we can't actually go outdoors and get our fix this is going to be like our outdoor fix so yeah. we should have turned up in our like outdoor gear and stuff like that and I really wish I had like an ice axe or something or some yeah. climbing kit right now you know we just be like playing with gear at the same time <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh that's so cool um yeah. so yeah so you um did some cool stuff with the um with Jules and um for the Her Mountain Cool thing so that must have been an amazing experience just in its own if we just sort of go into that a little bit yeah it, it really was it's um it it blew me away actually how much of an impact it had on me you know initially when I spoke to Jill she was she's like oh we're running this competition and uh this is sort of like what it's all about and what it's for she's like oh would you would you be interested and I'm like only if we can provide a training course I'm not not going into this unless we can do something that's going to set women up for like a long-term kind of confidence. Like I don't want just to be like a one-off thing. So it's mm. really, and it'll probably come through, I guess, a lot today. Like it's really important to me having a good education in outdoor recreation. Like it's, mm. it's so important for your personal safety, for your personal growth to be able to just continue on that pathway. So I think that was um, like a pivotal point for me coming into that competition is that I wanted to give something more than just the experience. I wanted to give the foundation. Um, and so and so I was like, oh, well, that's easy. That's, you know, that's just like some training. It's, you know, it's like a couple of days, no big deal. And then I actually, I've already delivered one of the, the packages for one of the lucky ladies and she had such an impact on me and I, I won't go into her story or what it was all about but I spent three days with her in total um two days doing uh, the navigation and survival training and one day doing sort of like a sea kayaking experience and we laughed and <laughs> cried and just did like it was just amazing it was like being out with a friend um but really seeing her challenge herself as well and, and grow in different ways and which in turn kind of grew me a little bit too and it's made me think a lot more about my contribution and what I'm putting out there because it's really easy to to have this as a business and to um, be doing what we're doing because what we love doing and it's my job um, but now I guess it's kind of triggered that switch like well what what else can I be doing that's kind of outside of the job factor so I've still got to be able to keep it as a job but also how can I contribute back a little bit so that's that's been the really cool part of this whole comp I think for me is I feel like I'm giving back in some way so yeah but it was yeah. it was incredible 
Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the other women as we um, as we go through as well. We're a bit <laughs> got a little bit of a stop on that one. <laughs> Thanks, COVID nineteen. Yeah, <laughs> damn you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, I've heard that the women that have been doing the stuff have just, yeah, it's been pretty, pretty changing for them. And like you say, really, um, you know, uh, really impactful for you as well, because it's like, the out, like, for me, the outdoors, you know, it's, it's a place I go for to when things not always, but when things aren't sort of going in a direction that I, yeah. I need and I need to regroup and reground, I find the outdoors for me is the place that just makes uh, makes sense. It makes everything make sense. I get to mm. really separate away from the busyness of life and um, demands and internal dialogue and all of that sort of stuff. And I find going to the outdoors for me, it gives that sense of simplicity um, mm. and presence like you can't be anywhere except present especially I guess if you're doing uh, mountaineering which is you know the space that you are in all of your happiness it's like you can't be anywhere except in that moment doing that thing so and in that then you then just reconnect to yourself and then and that is where you kind of start to re-navigate and reconnect and then you know life seems to be a little bit easier to <laughs> yeah. deal with when you're regrouped and re-centered so it's it's so true. I think for me, it's like a big reset button as well. It's I've I've used I use the outdoors in a whole bunch of different ways for dealing with different things that pop up. Um, and yeah, it's it is that time you you get a process to work through um like that time and solitude for reflection, and then processing what you're reflecting on, uh, and then coming out the other side of it. And it all happens quite subtly and just. Mm. it's like a naturally occurring occurring mm. process but because of it you come out of it you feel like you've come out reset like stronger and just in a, a way better space to then go deal front on with like what you need to deal with um, and that's what I think that's a part of why I really wanted to get into that um sorry there's like a wasp inside <laughs> me attack. um why I really wanted to get involved with uh the her mountain calls competition because that's what it works for me and I, I was hopeful that that might give um other women that potential that opportunity to find that reset button as well oh that's amazing so how did you how did um how did venture come into your life um and because obviously you've created a, a, a very successful business out of it um yeah. that helps change a lot of people's lives i was just gutted that i couldn't make the one i'm excited when we can get back into the mountains because yeah. for me i want to get I, I'm a North Islander. I have not really had much snow experience. So the thought of going into the snow for me is actually really scary because I, you know, I'm, I'm worried if I do something wrong, the, I feel like the result of making poor choices um, could be really uh, extreme. So I want to go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to know that if I'm going into the snow and I'm going walking, what are the things that I need to be doing? So, uh, yeah, I'm excited mm. for when I can finally do that. So, how this did you venture? Yeah, yes, this <laughs> year. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, so how did adventure come into your life? And then how did you go, I love this so goddamn much, I'm going to start a business? <laughs> well, it's, I, I've, been, I've been thinking about my, my journey because I guess I've been um, kind of, you know, for the last, it must be coming out like eight or nine years we've been running out to education New Zealand so that's been like a really good chunk of time then before that I was kind of independently contracting and then working a, a real job that was like stable and consistent um, and then I you know I studied so but working backwards I was sort of thinking about how I got into it and there was no real one thing you know that kind of drew me towards it, it was a whole bunch of different life events that kind of kind of created that that stepping stone that pathway um and I guess the start of it was like I was the generation of like go outside and play you know like <laughs> my parents and I I'm like the same with my kids as well like go outside and play there's lots to do out there you've got a big backyard like you don't need to be inside to be happy or you don't yeah. need to be watching tv <laughs> so that was kind of I guess 
the foundation, go outside and play. Um, <laughs> and it didn't matter if I, you ended up hurt or injured because that was just part of the game, right? So yeah, that's and right. we, we did stupid stuff as kids. <laughs> I used to jump off our playhouse roof thinking I was Mary Poppins, literally with like an umbrella thing. Can you edit that actually? <laughs> no, <laughs> they're staying in there. <laughs> I, um, we used to go from the top of our driveway, we, dad has a half acre section, we used to go in those little push pedal go-karts, you know, the ones that go like that, yeah, and then just stop, you have to like stop the pedals, but we would go from the top of dad's driveway down the hill, and then you'd have to like oh. drive like this to straight off speed, <laughs> and then we discovered you used to use your feet on the wheels to brake, but you'd get to the bottom, and there was, we used to have a big flex bush that was super deep, and the way to stop would you be barreling down and you just crank it sideways up into the flax bush pick it up run to the top of the hill <laughs> honestly you would have just like you'd be yeah you'd lose yeah. a toe really easily so yeah and I think like if we thought about our kids doing that sort of stuff now we just be like oh. like I have these <laughs> mum moments where I see my children like way up high climbing poles and stuff and the mum and me is just like get down you know that's so unsafe <laughs> like you're not even harnessed up come on let's put a rope on <laughs> and, then and then the instructor and me is like yeah climb higher you know go harder it's a real it's a real battle <laughs> yeah I love I love that we're that generation yeah it's a good generation to be in it really yeah. was it was a great childhood uh, yeah. but you know I kind of I was never much of a sporty person at high school I didn't really enjoy team sports I think I was a little bit too um aggressive maybe in team sports you know like I can I'm too competitive so I could never just be like oh it's a social game of netball without breaking fingers and Barging people so I never really got into team sports too much and I actually left high school halfway through my sixth form year I wasn't doing well I didn't enjoy it and mm. um I went and worked full-time at a supermarket in Oxford out in Oxford where I was growing up as a teenager and I kind of knew that that wasn't where I wanted to be but I didn't know what I wanted to do I was a atypical lost teenager so I went to Hagley Community College in Christchurch to redo my sixth form year at the time, or year 12. And I did a whole bunch of subjects that really interested me. I took psychology, creative writing. I was really into drama. I was intending to actually go to the theatre company as a career choice, believe it or not. Believe it or not. Um, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> Uh, and I took out Dereed there as a, like a fun thing to do because I needed to make up credits, which is so classic for most kids yeah. doing out at high school, right? And that was me. And my out Dereed teacher was just this incredible guy. He was really inspiring. He was very laid back and casual. He clearly just loved the outdoors. So it was really easy to be there. And when I think about my time in that class, it was only, I was only there for a year and we did one overnight tramp where we had no instructors or teachers like that was just what you did back then there were no staff with a group of students going back country <laughs> doing multiple river crossings um and it was that, that was accepted and that was fine like when i was doing that you know that wasn't a big deal and we were fine we managed to go around and do our overnight trip and we did a, a kayaking trip down um the hiranui as well it was like a part of our end of year trip and we did rock climbing and I just fell in love with rock climbing. Like that was that was my thing. I wasn't a very good tramper and I wasn't super enthused about map reading. So I kind of like fell into rock climbing. And believe it or not, at the end of that year, <laughs> I was sort of sitting there. I was like, well, I really enjoyed outdoor ed. That was a lot of fun. And my teacher was like, you know, a CPIT had this amazing outdoor ed program. It starts with a certificate because I, did, I didn't have the prereqs they hadn't come from like a really outdoorsy background um you should go there and do this and I was like oh but I want to do theatre company and Hagley had like the theatre company it was really renowned for sending like people getting into acting from from there so I yeah. was looking at both 
And the decision I made uh, to go into outdoor ed was purely based on the fact that the theatre company, like I wanted to act, you know, and then the first year was all about directing and doing all this boring stuff. And I was like, well, I, I just want to act. Like, I don't, I don't need to do that. I was, I was already like a, a bad actress, I guess. And that, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I went and did the year study at CPIT and within the first, two weeks I was hooked like there was no going mm. back and by the end of the year I had learned so much about myself and I grown so much as a person that um I went back to the following year to start the diploma process and that was when I found out that I could teach it I was like what I can teach other people this stuff uh, and I never looked back at all yeah. ever yeah and um different decisions along the way have led me to where I am now you know um but it truly was just a just a journey of, of personal growth that kind of led me here I think so and it, yeah it just fits me fits me like a glove like I couldn't imagine doing anything else at all like yeah I just couldn't <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> well, know what to do <laughs> lucky us then right yeah. <laughs> all those serendipitous <laughs> moments that um, um that come together to make things happen I think that's um that's yeah. the beauty of life right so yeah. we get these we get these calls and these nudges and you know um obviously you can follow different paths but um how amazing that you've ended up doing this because you must have impacted yeah. so many people's lives and helped so many people gain confidence in the outdoors with everything that you guys deliver um yeah and your training and that so. sort of stuff yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Maybe. I've had a lot of fun, you. but <laughs> <laughs> forget everyone else. It's just been a blast. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, when, uh, that was kind of like I guess my mantra when I was starting out, because you know, it's really hard to think of yourself as like a, a really good outdoor instructor because there's always so much you're learning and mm. developing about yourself. It's really you don't find that there's no end. You know, you don't mm. get there and be like, oh, I know everything now. Like that yeah. doesn't happen, and it should never happen. Like we should always be be challenging ourselves. And, and going forth in our own learning but I always had um, right from the very beginning like one person if I can help one person or help change a situation for a person or give them to one person the tools to be able to go away from this then I've done my job you know like I might have a group of 13 or 15 or 20 but if I can reach one person in that then that's a bonus and hopefully obviously more and not like <laughs> deter everybody else <laughs> but um yeah that was kind of my thing and then uh, I guess I have been really fortunate in the fact that I went through all my training came out and created a career in the outdoors and now mm. I get to go back to the training institutes um like ARA and uh, be in, involved with the development of new instructors or outdoor professionals coming through. Ah. So now I'm like, whoa, if I can reach one instructor and they can reach like one person in each of their groups, like imagine that reach is just, that's like change the world kind of stuff. Oh, I love it. That actually it's makes my cool. heart like super happy to hear that. Like, <laughs> yeah, the amount of impact that that creates, that's phenomenal. I really love yeah. what you said too, that um, our journeys are our our learning journeys should never end and that we mm. should challenge ourselves to grow because it's easier. I, I know how easy it can be to fall into the rut of everyday life. When I had, was running adventure girls, um, you know, up until just recently, we stopped mm. running adventures and we are now totally focused on, you know, just really growing that, um, uh, movement for getting inspiring women to get outdoors and do cool shit in New Zealand. And it's like, um, it was one of the big reasons women came along is because they were like, they were turning a certain age. They were like, usually they were hitting 40 or 45. And they're like, fuck, like, you know, you take a moment to reflect back in your life. And you're like, when was the last time I did something for me that was really challenging? They were mm. celebrating a birthday and a, a relationship had ended. So then again, there was like this really big thing to reflect on their life and go, shit, there was stuff that I wanted to do and I haven't done it. And so we would get these women through for these reasons that were like, they just wanted to finally like get out and I call it embrace life and um, feel more confident in themselves. And it was like, uh, it was one of the biggest things that I loved about it, but it was amazing being a part of that. Like watching mm. these women come along shitting themselves usually because they're going to go do so, or they're either two, one of the two, 
shit yeah. in their pants because they're going to do something that's really freaking scary or they're so pumped that they're just like, you know, right out there <laughs> to watch that. Yeah. And watch that evolution of them grow over that time. It was, it was pretty addictive. I'll be honest. Um, yeah, no, it is. It. but it um, is. yeah, but it's just also amazing to see these women challenge themselves. So um, what are the, what's one of the, what's one of the adventures most recently that you've done that you found is like, was that took you out of your comfort zone? I'm excited <laughs> to know about that stuff. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was, oh, I did one just in February. Um, hmm. so I managed to get out with Alan. It was, it was a birthday present from Alan and the kids. Uh, you know, this summer time of year is so busy for us, and I time is used as currency around our house. Like, mm. we just don't have time. So, when when we are gifting stuff, like a lot of it is based around time and quality time and experiences like that. Especially That's great. <laughs> so, so that was my birthday present. Um, Alan had organized with my mum to have the two kids for um, the weekend so we could go away and do something uh, like a, a mountain trip. <laughs> it's always a mountain trip. Like that's our go-to because we get yeah, nice. of everything in there. And I, it was my my thing. Like I could do organize whatever I wanted to do. I, I could have gone sea kayaking. I could have done whatever. But I was like, I need my mountain fix. So we organized to go into Arthur's Pass, which is just like my second home. I love it there, and <laughs> climb uh climb in some areas that we had and hadn't been. So we climbed Mount Philistine, wanting to do the traverse from Mount Philistine to Mount Rolleston, which is really, um, it's very, very different between summer and winter. And I wanted to give it a go over summertime because like you, snow is one of those things that even with the experience I have, it's, I still, um, I approach it with a lot of caution. Mm. And um, so going into those sorts of environments, is you've got to really be careful and pick your time. So I was like, wow, it's, it's nice to kind of have a bit of familiarity with the terrain before going back into it when there's snow there. So anyway, we um, did this trip and uh, we, we started, it was like, I don't know, Friday morning maybe. And we climbed up Mount Philistine, which is about 1,970 odd meters. It's like oh, feeling just good. Just a casual 1,900. Just, just a casual, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How we roll. How long um, I've got to ask them because I'm like, for me, given I'm only just getting into the whole mountain world now that I'm down in the South Island, how long yeah. does it take you guys to climb that? Like, um, uh, roughly because we didn't have a clock on it, but maybe yeah. like four ish hours, Jeez. roughly. <laughs> but there's no, when, the, <laughs> um, you know, the terrain is really, it's just like a walk for most, yep. there's most sections of it are pretty, pretty easy. It's just a slog up a hill, like keep walking. There's a section in there, the Philistine Bluffs, which is quite, depending on which way you go, can be quite technical. Alan found um, a wee while ago, like this really cruisy way through the bluffs and cool. um, he wanted to to try it out and see and, I think I recall saying to him something along the lines of, oh, it's a little bit vanilla, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all right, I'll follow you. It's, yeah. Not that I'm a oh. thrill seeker in the mountains, but um, no, it was really, really lovely little road. And we, um, so it just meant that, you know, anytime you're mountaineering, it's not about speed so much, it's about consistency and movement. Mm. So just keeping moving. You can be slow and steady and still do really good time in the mountains, but if you slow and stop all the time, then you're mm. blowing your day away. So it's it's all about consistency. I'm not fast, but I can go and I can yep. just keep going like a little rabbit, you know. So <laughs> we just kind of keep moving. <laughs> um so we, we got to the top and then we started our traverse along the tops, which is just epic. Like the, the scenery is insane. It's just so beautiful. Uh, we had a, a beautiful blue sky day. We, um, you know, like crazy little rocky sections that you're kind of scrambling through and then it opens up and broadens out and that's really nice. And just wow. like you're up high and just enjoying the scenery. Um, on that day, we didn't climb Mount Rolleston, so we got down to this little kind of notch in the, the ridgeline, 
and we drop down into the other side of the, the hill to go into uh, Waimak Falls Hut, which is kind of our destination for the night. Um, went into there, and then the next day we were going to do another alpine traverse. So we wanted to go climb Carrington Peak and do the traverse across to Mount Armstrong, which is kind of like the same distance from Philistine to Rolleston. I've just got a question. Um, what's yeah, the sure. what's, so you use the word alpine traverse, like what, is that because of the height that you're traversing at or what makes it alpine versus, you know, just going out for a walk? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Totally um, asking for a friend. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I guess, I guess the technical term would be ridge traverse as opposed to alpine traverse. But yeah, it's because we're in like we're traversing in the alpine terrain, yeah. um, like in the mountains. So yeah, um, yeah, I yeah yeah that's probably like the, the easiest way to to sum it up. I just different slang. Some people probably would call it a ridge traverse. Yeah, yeah. Um, we never made the ridge traverse because it turns out that the topo map lied to us. <laughs> So all the, the route information and in the guidebook and the topo maps, the, the contour lines, when we looked at it, it's like a grade one route. So um, there's a scale in New Zealand for grade one to five for New Zealand mountaineering. And grade one is like, you don't need a rope. It's like a scramble, but you, there's no sections that are too technical. You can generally get away without a rope. And we had all of our climbing gear with us. And we're like, well, this is going to be another big climbing day, big work. We don't need the rope. Why take the rope? Let's just leave it behind in the hut with all of our harnesses and stuff. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> so we, we literally get to 100 metres of the summit of Mount Armstrong and we're totally like walled out. Like we can't, we can't go anywhere. And we're standing on like this metre wide section. And there's like a precipitous drop on the other side. <laughs> And I, I'm not really, um, I'm still working through how to process those sudden changes, you know, like mentally deal with them when you're out there. This is, this is my challenging moment, <laughs> just in case it wasn't clear. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to this point where like, we can't climb Mount Armstrong because we're, it's too dangerous. Like there's no way we can go up there. I wouldn't even want to go up there with a rope. It looked loose. It looked dodgy. Like everything about it was just, ugh just no yeah um so our options like we could keep just pick up the traverse and carry on or we could go back down and go around the other side and try and pick up armstrong knowing that we couldn't drop back down that way and that's that's a day decision like that's gonna be our day over here or our day over there and to us you know climbing mount armstrong wasn't the be all and end all it wasn't about getting to the peak it was totally about being out there and doing the day so we decided to continue on along the ridge, but I had this mental block, right? Like this brick wall that was, I'm just like, I just totally felt walled in. Uh, we weren't, but I had this big wall on this side that looked dangerous and scary, and we should have been able to just walk up it. And then on the other side, there were these sort of gendarmes, and like big rock buttresses that we would have to climb through, and it was all kind of broken. Not as dangerous, but definitely needed caution and to be careful. And above all of it, it was like, this is supposed to be a grade one route, you know? This is, should be easy. <laughs> Why is this hard? And so I really struggled with that mentally to be able to stop, reset and go, okay, well, that's just, that's not that anymore. We have to move on to whatever our day is going to be. And it took me 10 minutes probably mm -hmm. of feeling for the first time over the whole weekend, we've been through some really crazy terrain, like unroped, really happy, really comfortable. And this is how important mindset is, right? It's like knowing mm -hmm your comfort levels and how to um, how to manage that because if your mind's not there um, then you should be taking extra precautions and I'm not saying you should go out there when you're feeling really strong and be unroped or anything like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't do that <laughs> but all I'm saying is like you're when your mind is feeling strong in those moments you're definitely able to make really good assessments and judgments mm -hmm. when you're not when you've got stress cloud in your decision making then you need to be kind of putting your safety net in place for that and I was kind of worried. I didn't really feel like we had that safety net at that time because of where my mind was at. Um, so Alan was, you know, he's just like amazing. Just 
just amazing. So Aww. he just kind of like supported me through that that section, like just one little section. And he knew for me, it was, um, wasn't that I couldn't do it. It was about my mindset at that time. And once we broke through that section and we were back out on like some really nice terrain again, mm. uh, it was all good. It was fine. And he, he knew that was all I needed was just that help to move past that wall. Um, and so, and this is a part of my journey in the mountains as well, you know, like is, is to progress myself, is to figure out how I work through that when I'm doing that uh, by myself or with other people. Mm. So I don't feel as reliant on people to pull me through that. Like I can do that myself. Um, yeah. And then we, so we carried on along the ridge line. <laughs> we got to like a high point and we went to, we were go, like going to keep going. And there was like a, like a 60 meter drop. Like we couldn't get down. And we're just like, again, this is supposed to be a grade one route. So by this time we were laughing. It was funny because we were like totally shut down by a grade one route and Arthur's pass. Like couldn't do anything. <laughs> um, but we had the most, stunning view of the west coast like we could see the ocean and the waves crashing on the west coast and oh, like, like and, yeah and these hanging valleys behind us oh my gosh it was incredible so we sat and had some lunch and just took it all in and we must have picked up cell phone service from the west coast so we facetimed <laughs> our kids <laughs> like hey guys <laughs> and just like a little panoramic <laughs> yeah here we are at the top of the mountain which um I'm pretty sure like anything at height terrifies my mum so I, I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um but that was okay so then we we kind of came back down and we walked across the glacier and um Ugh. the first time I've been walking through like crevasse kind of field not there was like one crevasse <laughs> <laughs> um, and like a you know, like a kettlebell lake with ice little mini icebergs floating in it uh, it was it was just beautiful it really was um, and we cruised back down to the Waimak Falls Hearts and there's like tarns up in the air and this beautiful oh. waterfall it's like if even as a tramper if you can get into Waimak Falls Hearts it's just glorious I put it's it on the list <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah it's, so good. it's not easy but it's yeah. so worth it yeah All right. um, and then no, the next so day so the, so this this time you know we've done already quite a substantial amount of out, like mountain climbing and travel and and this kind of terrain and um, the next day our options were to either walk down out the track and out around the river which is all downhill and you know seems easy mentally or we could climb up <laughs> to the the notch that we dropped down on day one and continue climbing up Rolleston and then down over the top and a terrace slide and back out again which is kind of where the vehicle was so that was sort of more ideal for us and we're feeling good like we're tired but it was like yeah let's do this <laughs> <laughs> um and but we did yeah and along the way we i we had to do um a couple of abseils off um like the top of the mountain which is the first time i'd done sort of random rock abseils in the mountains you know you do it for rock climbing and you're off hangers or tray gear that you've placed but it's a little bit different in the mountains you're always worried about the rock and quality and even when you know it's solid you're just like mm, is it really like, <laughs> it's always like that little you know in the back of your head um yeah but sorry very mentally challenging coming down like going up great fine loved it yeah um, coming down the mountain and you've got all that exposure at your feet um that's a real challenge for me so. how do you so how do you how do you manage yourself during that because um, you know, all your, all the stuff that you're talking about with the, um, with, um, you know, getting to that point where you were bluffed out and all of that. Uh, I did avalanche peak with Jules. <laughs> um, oh. it would have been, uh, quite a, uh, back when I first came here. So my whole like experience of climbing mountains was very limited. Um, and going up was fine. And I guess this is the interesting thing because people have different mental blocks. It's like going up. Yeah. There was a point where Jules really struggled when we got to one of the ridge lines going up mm. and that was all good for me but coming down when we were descending down the other side of the track I was shitting my pants like to the yeah. point that I like literally just kind of pretty much froze had a massive cry and then was like okay the only way out is to keep moving 
Like yeah. you can't sit here thinker. And I had to really have a firm word with myself. <laughs> And in a, yeah. in a kind way, I wasn't like, you're a dick, get it, yeah. Because that's, I think, what was going on before. What are you doing? Why are you so scared? Oh, if you trip this way, you know, you might break an arm. But if you fall that way, you're going to probably die. die. And then yeah. so, like, all that conversation's going in my head. And then I'm all tense. And then I'm like, I don't want to take any more steps. And then I was just got to that point where I just burst into tears on the ridge line down. And then I was yeah. like, just keep moving. And then once we got down to the flat, I was like, fuck me, that was just yeah. intense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I was and like, but I've grown, I've expanded. I, I know I can do that stuff. Like I, I'll, you know, maybe I might not choose to do it, but I know I'm capable of doing it and getting myself through it. So how does and it work like, for you? Yeah, that's, I guess that's like a very similar process. I think everybody has a, and, and to some degree, some people may cry, some people don't. I'm definitely a crier. Like I, just, <laughs> I have to release the tension. Um, and that, that doesn't always happen, but sometimes it is, there's definitely value in that, just, just having that moment and releasing it. So then you can reevaluate, you know. Mm. Um, for me, I, I guess part of it, how I manage that is, um, I do a lot of firm talking to myself as well. Like, come on, Sarah. <laughs> sort you of got out. This <laughs> um, it's really important to be out there with people who uh, support you through mm. that mental state and to be kind to yourself when you're going through that as well. And that's mm. something that we struggle with um, or that I struggle with is like, I feel like a lot of the time when I go out, if I'm, especially when I'm going out with the guys, um, which a lot of my mountaineering friends are male, then it's really, you don't want to feel like you're the weakest link. You don't want to mm. feel like you're not able to keep up and, yeah, you're you know, like that girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and to be fair, that's not an expectation that any of the guys that I've been out with have ever put on me. That is the expectation that mm. I put on myself. Mm. If, if anything, they're all, they're just like, she is one of the guys, you know, like give it to Sarah to carry the rope. She's, you know, she's got this. Yeah. Um, so they over, maybe not overestimate, but they see my skills and abilities um, mm. in a much nicer way than what I, I, I always underestimate myself, I guess. Mm. So it's kind of knowing what I can do. A part of it is recognizing that you need to, have the mileage behind you so you have to have those experiences of feeling peaked out of feeling um I guess a little bit vulnerable in a controlled way however you control it mm. um and knowing that I think I mentioned like the safety nets in place like knowing mm. you've got those safety nets in place so you can come back another day um and just owning it you know like so I I had two uh rock abseils on this last trip that I did first time I've done like a a rock abseil to get off a mountain. The first one was terrifying. The second one was a little bit better. I know when I go back next time, the third and fourth one, while they'll still be scary, it'll be easier for my brain to process that because I've just exposed myself and slightly desensitized myself to the fear. And all it's done is gone, ah, oh, now that just opens up new routes right because yeah <laughs> because it's steep it doesn't mean I can't get down it it just means I have to bring a rope into play and and do that safely and make sure that when I'm evaluating however I'm setting that up that I'm doing that safely so then my skills and knowledge come into play a bit more and I um and I fall on my technical knowledge to help me make those good decisions mm. so part of its mileage part of it's a supportive like recreational group um, mm. And then a part of it is like just having a little faith in yourself that you can, you can do it. And sure, it's scary as hell, but um, you'll own it and then you'll have done it. And then you'll be like, hell yeah, I'm going to do that again <laughs> <laughs> sometime later down the track once I've repressed how scared I was. Because <laughs> oh, you can never unlearn it. Like once you've, gr once you've grown and you've expanded into that space of having done it, you've created a mental map and your body's created a, a, a map and yeah. a knowing that that's possible so it's like you've just pos probably just broken through a, a belief of what you can and can't do and then you're like Absolutely. well now what like okay so I did that thing that I thought was 
not possible or so scary i may not do it and then you do it and then you're like oh okay cool yeah <laughs> and so <What's> next <laughs> <laughs> and something that really helped me was that the you know for this particular trip that we did in february that was my trip you know mm -hmm. like sure al's got so much more knowledge he's got four years experience on me in the mountains plus like he yeah. he's done a lot he finds harder than me he's he's got that mileage there that allows him to fall on that knowledge and experience in those moments or um you know to help me through those moments because he's been there in his own way of dealing with that mm. and um i just think like i totally lost my train of thought there <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was like, I got a little di diversion there. But yeah, yeah it, it's just it's just important to to keep having that exposure, and because then you will keep pushing yourself. And it doesn't have to be harder, you know. Yeah. Like it's not about going harder and bolder. It's just about getting out there and yes. doing it, doing it again, or doing something slightly different, which is outside of your comfort zone, and just keeping it, keeping the momentum going. Because yeah, I I, I lost it a lot. Um, my momentum after having max so max is four years yep. old and the first couple of years after having him you know i was still working i was still doing all that stuff that i was doing but i wasn't recreating as as much personally i did my local stuff but i wasn't getting out there and getting that mm -hmm. continuous exposure so i kind of had to go through a bit of a process again and i did that last year of just getting back out and doing my own thing mm. and kind of having my own goals to work towards and that has been just so critical for my mindset yes you know? uh like i think that's the thing too is because the lines can get so blurred with you know you've you've grown your passion into a business and so you do it all day every day and so people are like oh you're lucky you're out there all the time and yes like you know when i was running adventure girls it's fucking rad man i'm yeah. like out <laughs> learning to dirt bike and it's like it's work but it is work so yeah. like you're you're the way you're being and and how you're being present is very different to when you're going out with your girlfriends or your mates and stuff like that oh, and actually just totally. you know you're not having to manage a group and be careful and manage everyone's expectations and um ensure mm. everyone's safe you're just like put your sarah hat on kick our sarah hat on or helmet <laughs> for you <laughs> yeah. yeah and your ice pick and off you go and you go and have a good time and it's like how do you how do you now manage that balance between you know it being work and also play because the play part is so important um, yeah. given that the whole reason most of us get into something like this is because we love it so much, but we don't want it to overtake our world. So we want it to, to still be able to have that separation. So how do you do that for yourself? Um, um, I think you have to prioritize it. That's really mm -hmm. important. And it's really easy to not do that, you know? Um, so I, I try to look at it and it's not just about I guess, like in our world or our bubble right now, is that <laughs> Alan needs to prioritize his own recreation too. Mm. So, and this is something we're getting really good at now. So, okay, well, you need to do um, a different trip. Like, I can't do that trip with you because in, yep. you can't perform to where you need to be with me yeah. here because you're like not working, but he's working harder to look after me as well, I guess, because I don't have yeah. that experience that he has. So, like, he went and did a trip into Twin Streams, um, like three or four weeks before we went out into Arthur's Pass, and he did that with a friend uh, who he's climbed with since Polytech and they had an amazing time and they climbed some really hard stuff like you know like really really hard stuff <laughs> and, and he was buzzing from it you know and that's really good for him and for me um i i'm not i really enjoy solo trips so i don't mm. get too caught up in oh i need to go with a friend like if the weather window's there and i've got the time i'm quite happy to go out solo it's always fun to share it but um, you know like if it doesn't all align i'm not yeah. gonna force it i just go um, I guess I try to get like a good summer trip in and a good winter trip in. So mm -hmm. I'm getting something of each and really driving myself uh, or pushing myself. And then outside of that, it's just about local. Like what else keeps me interested? Just climbing locally on the rock in Christchurch. You know, we've got some of the most fantastic rock climbing. Um, yeah. It's about not always going sport climbing, like getting out and doing some treads so I can keep up on those skills. It's... Um, 
you know, all those, all the work days that I have that I'm out there with clients. Sure, you're looking after other people, but those are great times to reinforce mm -hmm. all those really basic foundation skills. So I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, I'm, I'm role modeling here, like exact, like textbook, like what I want people to do. Because if I'm doing it 100%, they're probably going to take away 80% of it. Um, so I really need to be on my game and make sure my footwork is like perfect and make sure my self arrest doesn't see me like fly off down the mountain, you know, like it's controlled and, and well executed uh, and well progressed and scaffolded. So I'm still learning and reinforcing basics to myself there. And I, I see value in that too. I think mm. it's really important. Mm. Um, and I'm sure any outdoor instructor finds value in like those fundamental skills that they're teaching because it's like the more you teach it, the better you get at it, you know. Um, yeah. But it is important to have those like those challenging trips. And the reality is, yeah, I'd love to go out and do a trip once a month, but I just I just can't. Yeah. So I just fit it in in between the seasons or whenever I can. If it's raining, it's raining. If it's snowing, it's snowing. <laughs> if it's storming, we don't go. We stay home and drink beer. What? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think it's yeah. so, it can be so easy to get fixated on, you know, when we talk like adventure means different things to different people. For me, an adventure doesn't have to be conquering a big mountain to the point where you burst into tears and then you <laughs> overcome it. You know, like that doesn't have to be an adventure. I think we can have adventure in our everyday life and we can, it, it's more the mindset of, you know, what you're doing. Sometimes adventure is yeah. about challenging yourself and, and, um, and learning some new skills and finding really where the edge of where you where your mindset is and um yeah. and kind of facing into that and then sometimes adventure is just like easy fun exploring where you're just just taking a nice flat walk in amongst yeah. the forest and that can be for me that can be just as um i'm going to say filling like because i talk, always talk about filling up your happy tank it's yeah. like for me that can be just as fulfilling as like breaking through on a, a big, you know, big walk like that or something like that. Just the, uh, just absolutely, yeah. yeah. Oh, it, yeah, it doesn't go. get outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You know, like I mean, you know, we're in lockdown right now, and this is the hardest time for people that have the mm. bug. Like they want to be out there. They've got the time to do it. They've got the equipment to do it. You know, like yeah. they just want to. They want to go, and it is a real mental struggle for people who are used to just that freedom of being able to get out. Yeah. And I'm seeing awesome ways people are getting around it, like tenting in their backyard. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you know, and doing their own little like backyard adventures, and I think that's so cool. But just to be forced into this, um, the slowdown of life, you know, like be forced into how how we fill our happy tanks, how we how we complete ourselves. Like the going into the outdoors isn't what defines us, isn't make doesn't make us who we are but it obviously contributes to our growth and we enjoy we get like a real kick out of that that personal growth and that challenge that's what most mm. people i think enjoy about the outdoors when they go out there whether it's climbing a mountain or tramping a classic route or trail running or mountain biking even though it's a real sport um or kayaking which is also not a real sport no i'm just kidding <laughs> i don't kayak um, so no yeah. offense. <laughs> sorry kayaking. you know like <laughs> It's just it's just about engaging with um, the environment and having mm. having those moments. And so for me, I've been removing the the ear, like my earpieces, like music when running and not running with music mm. because normally that's what keeps me motivated. Right now, it's just listening to the bird song and and just being by the ocean and just being engaged in that moment in the outdoors. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> so, um, what's a couple of pieces of advice? So, uh, like, I'm new to the South Island and mountaining and stuff like that. So, um, what's maybe like? Well, let's go with one. One great piece of advice for someone who's wanting to get into, um, maybe just getting into the mountains a little bit more. It doesn't have to be like with rope stuff and all of that. But if you're wanting to go beyond just the not marked route but you know like just to challenge yeah. yourself a little bit more what's some advice or some things that you would say okay definitely make sure you dot 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 okay well outside of training because yeah. you know like <laughs> yes. skills, um, yeah. because I could give you a whole bunch of advice around that um I think 
there's probably two pieces of advice that I could could give anyone aspiring to to try something new or a little bit more challenging in the outdoors. And the first one is that you're always going to underestimate yourself and your capabilities. Doesn't matter how good you are. Doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. It's just going to happen. We have those moments, right? Because we're set for self-destruction to a certain extent. So just be aware of that mindset. Be aware that you're going to underestimate yourself and think through like what are those moments going to look like and how am I going to prepare for that because that'll be the difference between you pushing a little bit further and turning around and feeling that sense of accomplishment um, and it doesn't have to be the top of the mountain um, and I might draw on that in a moment like a little bit further but um, you know it's just like what is the goal what are you trying to achieve and how am I going to make sure I don't underestimate myself to do this? Because I've set the goal, like I've set the challenge. So somewhere in there, I believe that I can do it. So that'd be my first thing. Awesome. I love it. The second thing I would say is it's okay to fail. Um, when I first started mountaineering, I was just like, yeah, you know, like I've climbed all the peaks that I set out to climb, I, I achieved them, you know, like I got to the top. Um, and Alan very kindly reminded me that, um, you know, a 50% hit rate in mountaineering is a really good success rate. So 50% of mountain peaks you go to do, you will probably fail on, you know, you won't get there. And part of that will be the mental game, a part of that will be the conditions, uh, they can deteriorate throughout the day, mm. they can get better, um, you know, like, it'll be a whole bunch of different things that'll come into play, could be your climbing partner, you know, maybe they're not feeling it for the day, you mm. can't keep pushing if they're not there, so it's okay to fail, and don't see it as a failure, just see it as, like, a part of the adventure, a part of the mileage. By taking on that mindset, I have definitely had far um, more... <laughs> failures so to speak or where I haven't like you know met the um the outcome of the day which was getting to the top of a mountain but within that uh in my moment of having like an epic kind of moment where I'm like oh I went wrong here and I shouldn't be here and how am I going to now get out of this um I learned how to deal with that so mm -hmm. I, there was learning in there and I took that learning and I, I didn't make it a waste of a day I, I learned yeah. from it and I grew from it so yeah you know believe in yourself but don't be afraid to fail <laughs> yeah I love it because it's so true like there's always going to be a lesson in something when we're when we're failing they call it there's you know so many different terms failing forward you know never lose yeah. the lesson out of it it's like there has to be some element that you can take away from not having reached the thing and it's like as much as we wish we were like kicking goals all the time oh, it's yeah. like we're failing more often it's just what we're making that mean about ourselves and then how we use that to go forward in life and yeah. in adventuring and that sort of yeah. stuff so and and it's like those failures go hand in hand with success because if you didn't have those failures then you know that can be oh. the difference between success five years later on a similar situation doing a different road or you know climb or ch mountain bike track or whatever it's like you've got to you've got to fail consistently um to get better at stuff and there's a a, a mountain guide who's also an alpine um instructor and assessor He's like, <laughs> in my mind, he's like the David Attenborough of the mountains, you know, like <laughs> if I could adopt him as my grandfather, I think I would because he's so, he's so incredible. Uh, I, think, I just think so highly of him. But um, he's just like, he's always said to me, you know, like your summit for the day might not be the summit, you know, like choose mm. your summit according to the conditions and your party and everything, like make it work for you. And if your summit is, the base lodge or the car park, and that's your summit for the day. Yeah. Great. Enjoy it. What are you going to do while you're on your summit? <laughs> you know, oh, like, I love it. Yeah, it's super cool. And I think like, he's just got this wealth of experience and, and mileage behind him. And he just, mm. you know, he knows, like, sure, you're not every day is going to be a, a peak day. And that's okay yeah. because it's not about the peak, it's, it's about what goes along with it. Yeah, it's the and adventure it's to get there, right? So, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And climbing so, a mountain is hard. Just uh, by the way, it's just yes. hard. <laughs> oh my goodness! That's all the time. Goes to all the training stuff. It's like with mountain biking. It's like no matter how much you ride up hills, it's still hard to ride up a hill. <laughs> it's a hill. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. No matter how much you keep doing it, it's still it's still 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> so if you could give your 18 year old self one piece of advice um, about life's adventures, what would it be? It was actually just those two. Oh, two that's perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. It really would be. Because like, when I was 18, I was just, you know, like so gung ho. I was frothing for outdoor adventures and I you know like just that us it out anyway yeah, <laughs> but my ah. expectations were so unrealistic and yeah. you know and I just be like just take it easy enjoy it fail enjoy the failures yeah I love it I, you know but and yeah but believing yourself more because I always like doubted myself a lot like of like what I could actually do and mm. how good how good am I really and it wasn't yeah. about that it was just lacking um a bit of critical reflection like on my personal skills to know what I yeah. can and can't do which I have now yeah. <laughs> so um what would be your top three um New Zealand must do's then like wherever they are in New Zealand across the whole thing what are the what would be if we're wrapping up this uh, conversation here what would be three yeah. th three places that anyone who's watching this um, you would, because I'm helping everyone build a little list of like cool places to go. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, so it's like, where would, um, where would be three must-dos in New Zealand for you? Um, or three highlight, uh, highlights for you? highlights. Yeah, that's, that's so tough. Yeah, because um, so, it's hard to, because like, there's so many things. I always talk about my trip to Dusky Sound um, with Pure yeah. Salt. Oh, my God, that blew my mind. Like, <laughs> yeah. we travelled to Dusky Sound, which is below all the others, and it's like we're on a boat for three days, and uh, we have to just get to point – we get dropped off at point A, and we have to get to point B, and there's yeah. no set route. It just depends on who's on it, and it's yeah. just – collect. Oh, it's just – it's so remote it's just mind-blowing and that's always in my top three so yeah I think okay um well Arthur's Pass is like my go-to I think you can get so much challenge cool. and adventure from Arthur's Pass and there's so yeah. many levels in there but the one thing I would say is don't ever underestimate that particular park that's the one place where I've had all of my epics like every time if something's going to go wrong, it's happened in Arthur's Pass. Yeah. Like, never Lois Pass, never anywhere else. It's always been there. And because you underestimate and the familiarity of going back there again and again. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Arthur's Pass is beautiful. Don't underestimate it. Yeah. Uh, the and second place Pike was an experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. And the second place I went to quite right, uh, maybe last year, I think, was out the back of Hamna and towards like, Mm, I'd have to pull a map out, I think. I want to say Tennyson, but I don't think that's right. Oh. Um, you kind of go out the back over, is it Jolly's Jolly Pass? I love how you see. asked me. I'm like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I should have been exactly. prepared for this. No, no. Oh. I love it. I love the surprise of it. Yeah. <laughs> Got to um, keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can't remember. I think it starts with T, Lake T, yeah. and there's um, I just oh my god, the terrain in there is just beautiful as well. Oh, you don't, we can you don't put the link in. Why. It's, there's, there's a lake you can camp around the lake. There's a whole bunch of like I think hunters go up there quite regularly as well, and because there's like a lot of little mini campsites sort of set up. But um, yeah, it, you just basically go uh, drive to Hamner, drive over Jolly's Pass, and then turn left and kind of go up into the station up in there. Oh. And if you wanted to go do a little Alpine Pass, you can drop over and that takes you into the St. James um, up in there. And it's, oh, it's just stunning. It's so beautiful. You could explore in there for probably a couple of weeks and not get bored. Wow. So that was, that was a really cool area that I went to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all my stuff is really land-based. Um, <laughs> I uh, think, uh, I guess if you were going to, Land is fine. Just whatever's like, yeah. doesn't have to be a variety of stuff. No. Um, oh, you know what? And I, I really love the Aerosmith area just up and behind. Like, yep. you can, Cameron Hut's a nice tramp if you're not into, like, mountaineering per se, but you want to go for a walk and be around mountains, like walking up into Cameron Hut. It's a bit of a grill, but and that whole area in there is just stunning. I've never been there yet. Like, it's totally on my list of places to go yeah. and explore. Do it, do it. It's awesome. Um, Going on the list. Uh, the hut's really cute, like right up the top. And Cameron Hut. Down. Yeah, it's about a 15k walk-in, but it's all right. Yeah. I actually 
I, I went in there and that was my my therapy after my father passed I went into Camel oh. Hut and did I did three days up in there and the first day you know like you're dealing with you're dealing with so much stuff and yeah. I kept like falling over into Spaniards like spear grass oh that stuff like the was only awful. one in the valley oh it was awful and I'm like swearing and yelling and kicking the Spaniard I was so angry <laughs> And I got back from that trip. My mum's, I'm just going to like tell this little story because it's quite yeah, funny. Yeah, please do. Was, like really concerned about my safety, you know, when I go out by myself. And yeah. and I remember one of the comments you made was like, are you worried about the crazy people out there? And I'm like, pretty sure I am the crazy people out there. <laughs> so watch out for me. <laughs> crazy woman swearing at Spaniards. <laughs> yeah. That stuff yeah. is awful. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, what a beautiful, um, what a beautiful place to go and a special moment to have to kind of connect um, back to your dad and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was really, um, really therapeutic. It was <laughs> really good. Yeah. yeah. See, the nature, yeah. it's just the outdoors. It's such a great place. So to just to reconnect back in and, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for like spending this time with me and just sharing all of your awesome stories. You make me want to go to the mountains and I cannot wait till we can get out of lockdown and I can book myself to rebook to come back on and um, and just get some yeah. more confidence to get into the mountains um, and feel safe over winter. We're going to be heading into the season now that it's the snow's coming up. So um, I want to be able to keep going out and not have to... Um, really restrict my adventure play and all of that just because um you know yeah I'm a bit worried about yeah I just need yeah. to I need to learn it all my biggest <laughs> thing is about what do I need to pack what do I need to take I'm my yeah. mates always give me shit they call me safety sinker because I'm like always got way more gear than I need um yeah but yeah I don't I would, yeah there's definitely definitely nothing wrong with that if you are looking for information and resources and like into all the women in your network as well if people are looking for that information and not sure where to go like we're not just a, a training provider in the sense that you have to come through and do a training course with us if you want information like we are want to be that source we want to help pe cool. set people on the right track so they're getting accurate information for being out there you know and the things like a packing list like it takes us 10 seconds to send through a packing list to someone who wants to know what they should have for a day trip out in the mountains so you know those resources are varied and can come from a whole bunch of different organizations and groups i would say um unless you're getting stuff from like the mountain safety council or qualified guides or people who are like mm. in the industry working then you know be very not necessarily weary, but you know, like take it with a with some Just challenge and be like, yeah. do I need this? Why is it there? What is its function and purpose? Um, and then if you have questions about how it works or how it's fitting into your um into your particular trip and you're not sure or other people aren't sure and um, just give us a call because we don't want people to be statistics and we don't want people getting hurt that's why we um provide training courses so if you want that information just come and talk to someone in our office or pick up the oh, phone give us a call because we're really happy to chat mountains <laughs> yeah i'll talk mountains every day <laughs> yeah you may not get us off the phone but yeah that would be the hard part <laughs> sarah i have to go back to work i have to pack my gear <laughs> Can I come with you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, when did you say we were leaving? <laughs> <laughs> That's um, pretty much how to go. <laughs> yeah. So if people want to get in touch with you, what's easiest? Um, what's the website that they can get in touch with you at? Oh, cool. So um, for for training, for information, in the outdoors is www.oenz.co.nz. Uh, you can call us on 03 3299076. The office is always manned. If we're not in the office and we're all outside, then it'll just go straight through to our mobile. So we'll pick it up <laughs> anyway. And, um, or email. So you can email uh, Sarah, S A R A H, at oenz.co.nz. Email is really reliable for us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely be putting all your contact details um, down uh, down below So uh, with this video. So for anyone else who wants to jump on and um, join in on any of the training um, courses that you've got, um, then go ahead and see Sarah. I'll be booking rebooking my one um, uh, for sure for this winter. 
Um, yeah. But otherwise, yeah, for resources and all that sort of stuff, just tap into these guys. So it's nice yeah. to connect in with like, you know, I love the fact that it's local businesses, um, you know, supporting local people and all of that kind of stuff. That's the thing that really makes makes my heart really happy. So yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk stuff, talk all the outdoor stuff with you. Um, <laughs> I'm sure this won't be our last catch up given now I know you live over the hill. <laughs> once, yeah. we're out of lock, once we're out of lockdown, I'll be like, let's go for a walk in the Port Hills. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And now I have to like get out of this like adventuring and go back to my garden or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> You'll see me. You should, like get your binos out and I'll be out there with my climbing <laughs> helmet on doing crevasse rescues or something. <laughs> Thank awesome. you so much for having me along. I've really, really enjoyed um, sharing some stories as well because yeah, that's it's always a nice part of like sharing with other other people, just some of the adventures yeah. and things that make me tick. So I really, yeah. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. All right, Sarah, take care. All right, cheers. Bye. Thanks.